Hi guys, so I'm getting into, I think it's about a year since I built this stove and all, what I'm going to do is just a quick update on the stove itself um, and I've also recently got a digital uh, thermometer so I'm just going to take some readings of the stove at different temperatures there's a few people ask me about temperatures and there's a lot of stuff mentioned about temperatures of these stoves so this stove seems to work really well well it does work really well it heats this workshop which is 20 foot square uh, it doesn't burn a right lot of wood it's a good stove so i am going to make some changes to it but <coughs> the changes are simply for the firebox what I intend to do is I intend to make this firebox a little bit bigger. Not in not in width and length, in height. So I'm, I think I'm probably actually going to build bring the firebox up to about that height there, the top of that door. And I'm going to use the same door on the top. And the only reason for that is it's not to get the temperature up, it's simply so I can load more fuel into the stove. Um, so I can leave the stove then for longer periods. I can say light the stove early in the morning. Uh, and when I come into the workshop to do some work later in the day, the stove should still be running. And it'll be chucking out a lot of heat. Right, so I've lit that. Um, I'm just going to let that get burning and up to temperature. You can see it doesn't, it's no great drama actually lighting the stove, it, it lights pretty easy. So I'm going to let that get up to temperature now and I'll be back in the YouTube time in about one second. Oh, what I will just do is I'll just show you the amount of fuel. I burn approximately this much fuel a day um, and this is the other reason I want to change the firebox is because I have to cut the wood up fairly small like this you know to get it and stack it into the stove so I like it if these pieces were you know twice three times longer and I can just stand them in and it's less work having to cut all the timber up you can see she's going to she's burning away there now um, it'll t probably take about maybe 10-15 minutes to just get, to get this up to temperature one of my flaps has just automatically closed itself as the box heats up <laughs> so it'll probably be 5-10 minutes for this thing to for the whole system to get warm hi right, guys so I'm back with a few readings now <clears throat> just add, this is the second stoke of fuel by the way this is this is the second filling of the box because I had to just scoot off and sort me pigeons out so um right what we got in the infrared on we've got at the bottom of the stove getting like 400 and what's that 400, 500 degrees around the bottom you, you probably have seen now as we rise up we rise up the stove the temperatures will start increasing somewhat and sort of maximum temperature we're getting on the top is nine nine just over 900 degrees Fahrenheit 920 in fact, I have had it slightly higher than that. I think I had it up to a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, the, the flu temperatures are we've got we've got two hundred and where are we? Yeah, two hundred and ninety-nine, two hundred degrees exiting from the bottom of the stove, and then. The temperature of the flue is is pretty constant. That's the bottom section there, and the and the higher section. 
and the flue as it exits the workshop is it's reading 170, 168 there but it's kind of a false reading there because the actual reading of the ceiling is 167 degrees that's the plasterboard there just above the ceiling which is kind of really hot so the, the exit at the flue is 167 but that's getting radiant heat from the top of the stove when you know the top of the stove is reading a thousand degrees you're gonna get the heat rising and, and warming the flue up there I did take a reading off the outside of the flue and it was a it was hundred and twelve degrees Fahrenheit at the top of the flue so uh, I think that just gives you some some idea of the temperatures that these things create and like I say uh, not a very lot of not a lot of fuel gone into that that is its second its second burn in there and this of course is burning at maximum speed I've got both vents open at the bottom so that uh, it can get as much air as it wants and what, I'd ha what I'll have to do now with this stove is, is turn it down because the workshop's getting ridiculously hot now so I'll close them flaps and when I close the lid you'll see that kind of starts to ease down a bit now now when them vents are closed, they're not quite closed, that's it. So you can see there, the vents are now closed and the fire calms down. And you just kind of, what, what kind of happens in there then is you can see that flame. That's the gases burning off the wood. And you'll start to hear tink, 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 tink now as the stove starts to cool down. Which is exactly what I want it to do. Because uh, it just gets too hot and it's just wasting fuel really because I'm gonna I have to keep opening the doors of the workshop to let some of the heat out. So uh, there we are. I'm really happy with this stove. It's it's just fantastic overall for the like I say for the amount of fuel I use and burn on it. The only thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna increase the height of that firebox. I'm going to roughly double the height of it and put that uh, glass door back on. Incidentally, the temperatures at the outside of that firebox you get about 600 degrees off the outside of the firebox. which is roughly the same temperatures as the side of the stove. So it's going to be greater there because that's where the flame, the naked flame is. So yeah, quite happy with that stove. It's kept me warm all last winter uh, and it'll continue to keep me warm. So my next video is going to be up soon and that's on the boiler stove. I'm going to carry on welding up today and edit the video in. So, there you go guys. Workshop heater par excellence. Catch you in the next vid. Okay guys. Bye for now.